I agree with the Prime Minister. We are living in a poorer and much more volatile and dangerous world. Where I disagree is it shouldn't have taken coronavirus to wake us up to this fact. I think coronavirus has, has focused our attention on just how vulnerable and volatile the world is and certainly has focused our attention to the extent that China is now very much front and centre in our, in our world and part of our strategic thinking. But the, this world has been with us now for some time. China has been certainly preparing for this world. It's increased its defence spending sevenfold over the past 20 years. China today accounts for 70% of total military spend in the East Asia region. Its official military budget has been estimated to be around 250 to $260 billion, although many analysts believe it's much higher than that because spending is hidden away in other areas. So this is the world that we live in now, in a, a world where China is increasingly a greater power, a world where you have big power rivalry, if not conflict, between the United States and China. We've already seen a trade war, concerns of a much deeper conflict, and a region that is heavily militarised and deep, deep fault lines that could trigger potential conflict. So this uh, spending now brings us up, what, to 2% mm. defensive... Which GDP. is where we've needed to be, so around 2% of GDP. Is that enough, and is it being spent on the right things? Well, it's certainly being spent in the right, in the right areas. If there was to be a broader conflict in this region, it would be much more a maritime-based conflict. China is certainly spending a lot more on its, its maritime power, its missiles, uh, its, its aircraft carriers, its submarines. So spending on that type of weaponry and that type of technology is clearly where we believe that any potential conflict would be fought. China is looking, has, has a, a strategy of what it calls A2AD, which is anti-access area denial. It's the capacity to fight a much more contained conflict, a regional conflict that stops its potential enemies, and for that I suppose you could read more broadly the United States and allies, from gaining a foothold. Now China doesn't spend anywhere near as much as the United States does on its military. The United States is up around plus $700 billion a year. But consider this, China doesn't have to spend in other parts of the world. The United States is still fighting conflicts in Afghanistan. It's still involved in the Middle East. It's involved with NATO and providing security for, for Europe. Uh, it has military bases around the world. China doesn't have this. So China can focus on its own interests and preparing for a potential conflict uh, in this region. There is a risk here, Roz, that when you talk about conflict, you can talk yourself into conflict. Mm. We need to be aware of it. We need to be aware of where the fault lines are, and there are many, uh, and we need to be preparing for something we hope doesn't happen. Does this move also signal that uh, the government feels Australia has to take greater responsibility for its, um, its own defence, that we can no longer rely on the US? Well, we can rely on the US to the extent that we have a treaty with the US, and the ANZUS alliance means that we are bound to each other and the United States is our biggest strategic partner. And the US presence in the region has been a presence that has broadly ensured a long peace post-World War II, albeit there have been conflicts in, in various parts of the region. But the message from the United States, from Donald Trump, and before that from Barack Barack Obama was, you have to start pulling your own weight. It was Barack Obama that was talking about Australia getting up around 2% of GDP. We've seen from Donald Trump criticism of NATO, for instance, in not carrying more of the load, and that the US, which is already stretched in so many ways, is going to have to, to carry that load. So it's a, it's a recognition of the world that we're in and where we need to spend. But clearly, if there was to be a worst case scenario, and no matter where you look, from the China-Japan rivalry in the East China Sea, the South China Sea, China and India staring off against each other over their disputed borders, the fault lines are many. The potential for conflict is real and increasing. In that event, we would still need the United States um, very much to be involved to ensure our security. But this is preparing for the world that we live in, a much more volatile world, a world that is going to be poorer, competition over resources, a return to hard borders, a return of nationalism, the rise of a power in China that is on track to become the biggest economy in the world, yet is an authoritarian regime that rejects, out, outright rejects liberal democracy. It does not share our values, even though we share economic interests. It is a much more complex and complicated world, and this is a reflection of preparing for that world. Just finally, what's China likely to make of this? 
Well, China, you know, um, has always had its sights fixed on its own interests and a long game. China does not want to fight a war today. Um, the RAND Corporation, which in 2015 war-gamed what a potential conflict would look like with the United States and China, they called it thinking through the unthinkable and said at that point China would lose a conflict with the United States. It would certainly have higher casualties, but the longer time between then and now, China would increase its capacity to fight that war. And there will come a point at which China will be able to withstand the might of the United States. So China is certainly looking further ahead. Now, what China makes of, of Australia, and, and we've been very careful in our language, and the Prime Minister's been very careful in his language not to outright say this is about China and this is about the China threat. We can read into that. Clearly, China is, is challenging the status quo, but he's been very careful in that. But China in the past has pushed back and very recently has pushed back against Australia over issues such as COVID-19 and, and, and putting more restrictions on our trade. So it's a, it's a relationship that has to be very, very carefully managed, aware of where our interests lie, but also very clear on what the potential risks and challenges are and preparing for both eventualities.